So I'm not sure what is going on here, but this is a huge red flag for me, and it could very well be what has caused this campaign and the previous one to fail. I wasn't expecting this. All right, whoa, here. whoa! Hey, what's up, guys? So we are back for yet another Kickstarter analysis. So I've been getting a lot of these emails from campaign creators asking me to do an analysis of their active campaigns, looking for feedback as to why things are not going so well, or just wanting to improve things for you know future campaigns. So in this particular one I'm gonna cover, it was interesting to me because it's a genre I quite like, which is the 2D sprite fighting genre, you know, like Street Fighter Third Strike or King of Fighters. So anyways, this is the email I got. Hello, John. I'm the director of an indie game currently in development called Blazing World Stars. So far, we've had two Kickstarter campaigns. The first was cancelled since it wasn't going any further, despite some help from the team in trying to spread the word about the game, but it took time to get a demo out since we were too focused on polish. We had people on our team that were good at marketing, but when we needed them the most to help design the second campaign, I was stuck looking to handle the page by myself. We seemed to be struggling with the same issues in terms of visibility or getting coverage, let alone it seemed to be difficult to gain followers for the landing page before we launched. I'd like to know what we can really do before even bothering starting a third campaign. So thanks for sending me the email and I commend you for reaching out to myself and the channel to get some support. So this is the first campaign which is now cancelled. Uh, Blazing World Stars. 2D sprite fighting game goodness. And you can see here they've asked for a pledge of 68,000 Australian dollars. So out of the gate this is a premium price point that you're asking here. Um, a game that is asking for this much money has to be really special. Uh, and I'll just kind of front load that before we go any further. Um, 2D sprite fighting game goodness. This is a bit of a mouthful. Um, this could have just been 2D sprite fighting goodness. Anything I say in this video is intended to be beneficial for the campaign creator. They, of course, uh, did reach out to me asking for help. So I want to kind of be as helpful as I can. And at times it might mean I'm very direct with what I say. You know, but everything, I, anything I do say is, of course, subjective. It's my opinion based on a, being a content creator, um, a kind of a pseudo marketer in a sense, and of course, a consumer. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick sweep of this campaign and then we're gonna jump over to the active campaign, which is a bit more relevant. But I'm, I'm looking at this one because I wanna get a contrast between the two to see what went wrong the first time and if they have improved on those problems. A fighting game inspired by the likes of Street Fighter, King of Fighters, Marvel. The main picture here doesn't really tell us much. Some characters which uh, look to be furries. And then we have a lot of story. And then we have, um, I don't know, I guess more story. And then we already have stretch goals. So they've gone straight to, um, from story to basically stretch goals. Um, and yet no gameplay, no GIF, no video embedded in the, in the header, nothing like that. And I hope the campaign creators sending me these emails understand I am of course a YouTuber and there is a possibility I will do a video about the campaign. And it's useful of course for the whole community to see these campaigns and understand what's going on. It brings more eyes to the campaign for the creators. You know, some people watching this video might actually want to back the campaign or you know get in touch with the, with the creator or follow them on their socials, things like that. So it kind of benefits all. What this is suggesting to me that for $50,000, the original goal, you only get four characters. Now, this is a bit of a problem, and this could very well be why this campaign has not succeeded. You know, we, we are in an era where fighting games are all about diversity of characters. You know, some of the newer um, AAA titles, of course, have, you know, a plethora, up to 100 characters. I played Tekken uh, 7 recently, and just is all about character selection. And although this is not a AAA game, there is still an expectation of having um, a, a reasonable selection of characters, right? I mean, even the old um, Street Fighter World Warrior had six playable characters with a total of, um, I think it was 10 total opponents to fight. So having only four is a little bit concerning to me as a fighting game fan. I think at this point, I'm just gonna jump straight over to the um, second campaign because this one is of course now canceled. So yeah, I mean, we might as well just jump over to that one. All right, so here we have the second campaign and you can immediately see they've lowered their um, pledge goal to 41,000 Australian, which is 30,000 
uh, USD. So they've got nine days to go, and I think we've only uh, a very small amount funded. I think it's fair to say that they're not going to get to their desired goal without some kind of a miracle or some Saudi Arabian oil baron coming in and just funding them. Um, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, so why? You know, what has gone wrong here? So we can see here some changes from the first campaign. They've actually embedded a video here. Very good. That's good. Um, let's see if they've changed that um, wording in a 2D sprite-based fighting game developed in Unity, inspired by King of Fighters, Street Fighter, Marvel, and Capcom. You don't need to be telling an audience of gamers that your game is built in Unity. If anything, it might actually hurt you because while um, Unity is cool, it's great, I use Unity for my own projects, but Unity also has a bit of a reputation for um, low quality um, games just because it's so accessible and a lot of people make games with Unity. And as a result, because of that accessibility, it's got a bit of a reputation. So you having in your um, title, hey, this is a 2D sprite fighting game developed in Unity. This could very well detract people from backing this campaign. So let's watch a bit of this video, shall we? I'm ready for some action. Give me your best. Now you're in my ballpark, pal. Round one. Welcome to Blazing World Stars! <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. I quite enjoyed that. There's, um, there's a lot to like about that. Some really cool animations. And uh, being a, a fan of Street Fighter Third Strike, I can see there's some influence there with just kind of the, some of the character poses and just the, the frame animations themselves. So here's the thing with fighting games. Though visuals are very important, um, Fighting games come down to feel, how good they feel. And it's something you don't get to know until you play it. And I saw a little demo written in the corner of that. So hopefully there's a demo we can actually play. And if there is, we will do that. But um, yeah, so until we get our hands on it and feel it, it's really hard to gauge how, um, how good this actually is. Because looking at it, it looked quite like interesting and had a good rhythm to it. Some updated graphics I see. Blazing World Stars is bringing you back to the 90s arcade era of the fighting games with fast-paced 2D traditional fighting inspired by the likes of Street Fighter, King of Fighters, and Marvel vs. Capcom. And, if I'm not mistaken, Brutal Pause of Fury. I'm a big fan of fighting games. I've got a Street Fighter poster back there in the corner of my room. Big fan of Street Fighter. I played all the SNK games growing up, King of Fighters, all the way back to when it was like King of Fighters 96. So I'm essentially a potential consumer and backer of this page. So it, there's a nice alignment between this page and my own interests. Steam, Twitter, Discord, and we'll check out these in a moment. Ooh, try the demo. Excellent. We'll try these out. And um, goals. All right. So, yeah. So once again, we have this issue with only four characters being offered. So if you if this campaign gets funded in full, you only ever get to play four characters. To get more than four characters, the campaign must be overfunded. So I don't know, like four characters, I'm not sure that's enough personally to build a compelling fighting game. I'm just not sure that's enough. So I've got some gameplay GIFs. It's kind of cool. It's kind of Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha 2 with that kind of trail effect. Enhance system. So it is enhanced. So um, there's maybe a potential hook of some kind, some distinct point. In a nutshell, it is something that adds one more layer of complexity and strategy to the gameplay. Um, I know this is kind of in development and that's cool, but probably best you don't show this kind of like... Um, I think in a campaign, it's important to just put your best stuff on show and try to not focus on any imperfections or things that are like clearly in development. Try to kind of sweep them under the rug if you can for the sake of the campaign. You know, people understand it's in development. You don't need to say, hey, here's a, like a, a broken character or a, or a camera that's not necessarily kind of um, keeping its bounds correctly. 
For comparison, I recently did a video analyzing a Kickstarter campaign for a game called Snakes Above. This is a hype polished survival game. It was, you know, in development years before they came to Kickstarter. And the amount they were asking was comparable to uh, this game here. And that game was so polished, you know, there was no nothing left to chance in that campaign. Like every bit of media was just top notch. Okay, so I think that's the expectation if you're asking for this much money. You can't have any rough edges basically. I mean, it can be in development, people understand this, you can make it clear what needs to be developed, but the stuff you show, the stuff you do put on screen, has to look really good in my opinion. Breakdown of the development costs, um, development 40%, art, assets, yeah, maybe. Um, coding a fighting game from scratch is no trivial feat. You know, if you wanna make every opponent feel distinct, have their own kind of traits and characteristics, it's very, very difficult to, to get that balance right as well so that different classes complement other classes during fights and not one class is, you know, overpowering the rest. So it's, it's, it's quite a balance to get right um, just from a game design perspective. Um, but to actually um, code the AI is very, very challenging if you're doing it from scratch. Of course, if you're utilizing some um, kit or whatever, um, less so, but, but still there's a degree required. So I don't know what this game is doing if they're building everything from scratch. Um, yeah. So what do you actually get if you pledge to this campaign? Uh, $10 pledge. A thanks from the team. A name within the credits. Uh, what about the game? Pledge 25 or more. A name within the credits and digital art book. I'm not clear as to what you need to pledge to get the game. This is a big problem in my opinion. I mean, am I reading this wrong? Is there, is there like a natural understanding that you will get the game no matter what you pledge? Because I don't think so, right? It includes, I mean, you de <laughs> you're definitely not getting the game for $10. $10, it's, it's significant, right? $10 US, um, especially if you're being an early backer, an early adopter, um, you're putting, you're, you're risking your money. So there should almost be a incentive. Often when you back a game on Kickstarter, you get the game cheaper. That's one of the incentives campaign creators often use where, you know, as a early uh, uh, pledger, as an early backer, you're taking the risk because the game may never be completed. So there needs to be some kind of reward for you taking that risk. So you're getting um, ahead of the, the market, essentially. So you should be incentivized by that. And it's not uncommon, you know, to see this. You know, some games are heavily reduced if you back them on Kickstarter. So even for 25 US dollars, you don't seem to get the game. At least that's not what this campaign says. I mean, you get the digital art book and your name in the credits. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm. this is a big, big red flag for me. And it could very well be what has caused this campaign and the previous one to fail. No backers. Like nobody's gonna back this tier because it hasn't even got the game listed. And here, finally, the digital game key. All right, this is problematic. Um, and it's unfortunate because I wasn't expecting this. To back 25 US dollars is not enough to get a digital copy of this game. Are you serious? And it's why all the backers that have backed this campaign are all um, in this tier here, 19 backers. So I really don't know where to go from here, guys. You know, I wanted to check out the demo and check out the Steam page, but like I almost feel like there's no reason to, you know, because I, I think it's very clear why nobody is, is uh, pledging to this. It's, it's too expensive. I mean, you, you need to put in 35 US dollars or more and take all the risk knowing that this game could very well never be finished. And like, you know, the game kind of looks cool and fun, but I mean, I don't know if this is a $35 game. We've only... Um, four cat playable characters. If I'm bang, paying $35 for a fighting game, four characters is just not gonna cut it. I need at least, I don't know, more, at least double. And then you've got these um, really super expensive tiers at the bottom, you know, 3,500 US dollars, um, 2,000 US dollars, and maybe, I don't know, maybe you get like a, you know, sometimes like you get your own character or something like that. If I'm gonna pay that much money, you better give me at least a character that looks like me or something like that. But, um, you know, three and a half thousand US to basically just get a special in-game supporter banner is, um, yeah.
So, okay, I mean, let's check out the Steam page and maybe we'll have a look at the demo or something like that. All right, guys, let's check out this demo, shall we? Let's do it. An error occurred while updating Blazing World Stars, missing executable. Um, yeah, look, that's a problem, you know. You have an active Kickstarter campaign asking for a lot of money with a demo to showcase the gameplay. And the demo on the Steam page, which is the primary um, link people are going to use to access this demo, is not working. And that's going to have, you know, ramifications and um, in terms of perception on the larger project. But anyway, so let's see if we can find another demo link, shall we? All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm ready for some action. Give me your let's rumble, small friend. Round one. Blaze on. Come here. Now you know that I'm safe. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Can I do a Hadouken or something? God, jeez. Get off me. Get off me. Whoa, whoa. It's a smashing me. Hold on. Oh, I did a fireball, I think. I think. I don't know. Hold on. It turn around. I can't turn around. I'm stuck. I'm facing the wrong way. I can't turn around. I can't turn around. Come on. All right. So I mean, some bugs there potentially. Okay. So I've got a Hadouken. All right. So what's he gonna do? Can't do much. Let's see. We've got a Sharyuken. Yep, cool. Okay, so some of the classic game moves that I'd expect to find in this game, which is cool. Um, but it's very just this guy's this um, Baloo the bear looking guy is really hard. Alright, so I got him. The thing is with the Kickstarter, it's not just about the campaign. I often get emails from people um, in these situations and they'll be like, you know, what's wrong with my campaign? You know, why can't I get exposure on my campaign? You know, what did I write or what images did I use incorrectly? And it's not just about that, you know. Sure, the campaign is one important factor, but it's only there to prop up and support the core game. So the core game is the main thing that has to be really compelling. Um, or the concept or however early you are in development but um, they have to work in unison the game has to be there the campaign has to be there and they have to work together to create a, like a really compelling product that people want to pledge to but again it's really hard for me to even comment on these things knowing that I have to pay as a consumer $35 to even ever get a chance at playing this game and of course I say a chance because there's no guarantee that any game is ever going to get completed. You, this money could be poof to the wind, you know. So let's have a look at, you know, what kind of audience they potentially had going into this. Because, you know, I've said before in other videos like this that you have to bring the audience to your campaign. And you cannot expect um, Kickstarter themselves to be promoting your campaign. You know, they have like maybe a thousand or more active campaigns at any given moment across various categories. And the game... Um, specifically the game category has, you know, has been under scrutiny of recent because of all the failed campaigns or kind of cash grabs and just basically unfulfilled promises. So, you know, people are a little bit incredulous when it comes to games on Kickstarter in general, especially ones with high uh, price tags like this. You have to bring the audience with you. So let's have a look at what kind of audience they potentially uh, brought to this campaign. So they've got 39 people following the page. If you kind of um, extrapolate that, it will um, maybe point to a few hundred wish lists on their page. So let's have a look at their Discord. So they've got 175 uh, members. So I'm just not really sure where the creator is expecting the eyeballs to come from. If you've only got a, you know, a, a handful of people following you on Steam and 175 people in your Discord, that's not nearly going to be enough to, um, you know, fill this. So the rest has to be done with marketing because it is a, a niche genre, right? Like it's a fighting game genre, but not only that, it's a furry game, okay? So this is like a, a super niche because though I am a um, fighting game enthusiast, had I gone to that page and seen it's like all furries, 
then maybe I still don't want to back it, right? So you're kind of um, diluting your potential audience further and further and further. So that's fine, but you've got to take that into consideration when making that campaign and asking for a lot of money, especially if your existing audience base that, or, or your fan base that you're bringing to the campaign is very limited. So with a quick Google search, I managed to find this um, campaign for a furry fighting game called Beast Fury. You can see it's a very nice looking game, um, very polished some really tight animations and art. And you can see here that they barely raised $1,500. You know, this is indicative of potentially the interest for this type of game. Um, you know, there may very well be an audience out there, but you have to find them, you know. So I guess um, I always ask the developers, you know, what have you done to find this audience? You know, have you gone to furry forums to talk about the game you know have you maybe i don't know like posted artwork from the game on deviant art and you know try to get discussions going i because you have to be really creative when it comes to this consumer acquisition stuff you know throwing ad spend on it is not always going to be the solution because often these ads they cast a very wide net and don't always find the audience hereafter so you have to really dig in and go find them yourself you know, maybe this page has had a lot of eyeballs and have just been deterred by the price of admission. That could very well be the case. Okay, so let's wrap this up with a quick summary, shall we? Um, the game has a lot of potential, really nice um, animation work, some cool music, great concept, strong themes. In terms of, you know, problems, there's responsiveness issues in the demo. The Steam page demo link seems to be broken. Um, the Kickstarter campaign itself... Um, presents fairly well you have an issue with only offering four playable characters i think that's just not enough for a fighting game and of course you have the price of admission being from what i can see correct me if i'm wrong but 35 dollars us to even get a digital copy of this game and to only have four players as a result of that, with the kind of risk being on the pledger, that's a big problem in my opinion. So the campaign creator mentioned that they're considering going for a third crowdfunding attempt. You know, two failed campaigns, third time's a charm. And I think before um, they do that, um, you should really take a step back and um, consider the situation carefully. And hopefully the things I've mentioned in this video will be useful for you if you do go down that path. Because I want you to have success with this. I want you to get to a point where you can be funded or have a market viable product. So anyways, guys, please do let me know what you think down below. I think it's a very interesting one. Um, I think it's very like evident, obviously. But still, if I've missed anything or you guys have some unique perspectives that I've not considered, I'd love to know down below. And of course, um, all the best to the developer. Um, con congratulations on getting this far. I can just imagine what it takes to put these campaigns together, the stress. And um, I commend you for being courageous enough to email me, a YouTuber who does these kind of analysis videos. Um, yeah, and, and, and asking for, I guess, the community's feedback, the developer community's feedback, because it's useful, right? You've got to be open to these things because ultimately this kind of feedback is going to be the difference between you um, succeeding in the future or not. So good on you. I commend you for that and all the best to everyone. See you all in the next video. Bye.